All right, today we'll be talking about array slicing, accessing subarrays. So in layman's term, it means how do I access multiple values in an array? So you can follow along with me by downloading the Python notebook that's linked in my description. You can either open the notebook up in Jupyter Notebooks or in Google Colabs. Today I'm using Google Colabs, as you can see from the icon in the upper left-hand corner. So in this Python notebook, we're actually about midway through. Um, so you'll see the section array slicing, accessing sub arrays. All right, so what we want to do first is create an array. Uh, this array is going to be x. So we're using this function a range, and we're basically asking for a 10 element array starting at zero. Right, so now I have 10 elements here from zero to nine. So I'm, I'm actually gonna change this up a bit because I don't like the values, values uh, being used here because it's gonna conflict with how I explain positioning and accessing um, these subarrays, accessing these values with positions. So I'm, I'm actually gonna be starting at 10 and ending at 20. So I still have a 10 element array. It starts at 10, ends at 20. And of course, you might not remember this, but the last element in this, the last value in, in uh, basically building an array is oftentimes um, exclusive. <clears throat> and so this is a concept that's throughout Python. It's, it's very common in how we create arrays and, and other things where the first, the first value is inclusive. So it's usually denoted with the square bracket here, 10, a square bracket, 10 comma, and then 20, and then a parentheses like that. That means that it's exclusive. So the square bracket means inclusive. So you'll see the number 10, and then the last element, the last value is 20, but it's exclusive. So it'll only go up to 19 and it will not display 20. And that's really common in Python. And so you'll see this sort of writing often. And this is the way Python typically behaves. All right, so just keep that in mind because that's actually a very important concept uh, with, with subarrays and accessing multiple values. All right, so we have an array from 10 to 19. And now we wanna access multiple values. We wanna, we wanna maybe grab the first five elements 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 in this, in this array. <clears throat> so just before I execute this line of code, let's go up to the top here. This is the proper syntax to access multiple values within a subarray. So you have the variable name, the array name X, and then within the square bracket, you have essentially a value that corresponds with the starting position and then a colon and then a value that corresponds with the stopping position and then colon and then step. And step essentially means the interval. And so if you have one, it's going to just step through the array um, with interval of one, which means that it's going to access every single element. If you have a two in the value of the step parameter, it means it's gonna skip every other uh, value in that array. And so we'll, we'll actually go through a few examples of this to make it obvious. So if you look at this right here, x and then colon five, it doesn't necessarily mimic this top, this top, uh, syntax right here, right? Because I don't see two colons and I don't see three numbers. This is shorthand. Um, so to make it confusing, you know, even more confusing to a beginner, this is shorthand. And so let's actually write it in, in this way first, and then I'll talk about the shorthand a little bit later. So I'm gonna comment this out. I'm gonna start from scratch. <clears throat> and so if I wanna explicitly write out this, this whole thing uh, to access five, uh, the first five elements, what I can do is um, it will, I, I want it to start at zero. So zero is the first position, right? 
I'm not going to type in 10 because the values that you're putting into this, um, this subarray here are position values. So zero means it's the first position in this array. And then colon and the stopping position, right? The, the stop right here. So what is the stop if I want the first five elements? Well, we can just count them manually. So this position is zero, one, two, three, and four. This gives us five elements, right? 10 to 14, it's position four. But I, so, you know, normally people will just say, put four right there and then go through and then try to execute that line of code and you're not gonna get it, right? Because as I mentioned before, Python, the way it works when you're creating arrays and, and um, trying to access um, values in an array is that it's the, the last number, the last value is exclusive. So we actually, if we put in the four, we're actually gonna get only uh, values up to 13 and we wanna get this fifth element. And so in order to do that, we have to write uh, write five. And then the step value, which is one, because we want every element, uh, every one of the first five elements. So let's actually execute this line of code. And we get exactly that, right? We get the first five elements. So why does, why did this Python notebook, whoops, only have one number and one colon? This is just shorthand. All it's saying is that if I don't write anything here in the beginning, uh, it's gonna imply that it's a zero. It's starting at the very first element of the array. And then I have a colon. And then uh, if I have a five here, it's just saying that it's the, uh, the stop value. And there's no second colon and there's no step value, but it's just implied that the step value is gonna be one. Like these are Python, these are NumPy defaults. So if there's nothing written here, it's always gonna start at the, the value of the first position. So it's gonna be zero and it's always gonna have a step of one. So the only thing we're actually explicitly specifying in this case is the stop value, which is five. And so if I actually run this line of code, I get the exact same thing. I get uh, the first five elements. So that works too. I think if you're a beginner, you wanna, you wanna actually you know, practice by explicitly writing all of these values because you're gonna understand it better and it's gonna kind of get drilled in your head a, a lot better if you just keep explicitly uh, writing this stuff down. All right, so let's work through a few more examples. So what if I want uh, elements values after the fifth index? So what does that mean? It's just after the fifth position, right? And so what I maybe what, what I want is um, zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? So after the fifth element or index of five, maybe what I want is these five numbers to be displayed. So am I gonna write so a five here? Yes, because it's inclusive, right? So this position is five. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. And as I mentioned before, the, the Python syntax, Python nomenclature, the, the first value is always inclusive. So we're gonna write a five, we're not gonna write a six, we're not gonna write a four. And then a colon, the stop will be essentially the 10th the position, right? So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're not gonna write a nine because it's, it's exclusive, the stop is exclusive. So if we write a nine, it's only gonna get us to 18. So we're gonna actually write 10. And then we're gonna step by one. And these are elements after index five, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So another way of writing it actually is what if you don't actually know how many elements are in your array and you just want all the values after the fifth element? Well, 
you could re you could actually access it using negative indexes. And so negative one just means that it's the last element in this array. So it would be 19. So if you put negative one here, you get only up to 18 because again, this is exclusive, right? So it it'll, it it actually represents 19 and because it's exclusive, it will only go up to 18. So in which case you can either do this, which will get you up to 19, or you can actually say and type in 10, which will still get you 19. All right, so let's go down to accessing numbers in the middle array. And what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna, display X again, just to make it clean and simple. So here's the array. We want to access the middle of the array. So let's just take a look at this code and let's just see what it does. Let's, let's think about what it does. So if I see code that looks like four colon seven, what it's saying is very similar to X four, colon seven colon one right the start is position four the ending will be exclusive to position seven and we're going to step by one so what are the positions let's think about it the, the first position is always position zero so this 10 represents position zero so it's zero one two three four so we're going to start at 14, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we're going to end at 17. But remember, the stopping value is exclusive. If we're going to step by 1, we're probably only going to get 14, 15, and 16 out of this. So I'm going to comment out the first line of code, and I'm going to just execute this last line of code. And that's exactly what we get. We get... 14, 15, 16. So let's uh, go to the next one. This one is playing around with different steps, right? This is every other element. And it's, it's written in shorthand nomenclature, double, double colon, and then a two. So what we're probably gonna get is like a 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So let's actually, before we run this line of code, let's actually write the explicit, the whole thing explicitly. So we're gonna start with zero because that's position zero. It's not, it's not value 10, it's position zero. And then the end is essentially 10, right? Because it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And because it's exclusive, the stopping parameter is exclusive, we're writing a 10. So we get we get all the positions up to position nine. And then again, uh, we want every other element. So we're going to step by two. So let me just comment that out. Let's see what we get. And that's exactly what we get. We get every other element. So let me comment the explicit line of code. And let me just execute the shorthand. You get the same thing 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. All right, so that's one way to to play around with, you know, grabbing um, different intervals of of values or values at every interval or every different interval. Let's move on to this. This is basically the same thing that we did before. It's it's basically starting at element one or index one, position one and then going to the very end of the array and stepping by two. So another way of writing it, let me actually display the array. Whoops, wrong array. Okay, let's display this array. So another way of writing it is saying that I want to start at index one or position one. I want to go all the way up to the last element, which is the 10th element, so I'm gonna put a 10 here, and then I'm gonna step by two. 
I'm gonna get rid of that and I'm gonna execute this and I get every odd value in the um, in the array. So I comment this out and I run the, the original line of code. I should get the exact same thing. I should get odd values, which is exactly what I get. All right, so let's move on. We have just a few more concepts. This one's rather easy. Uh, this is just basically getting elements in reverse, like stepping through the values in reverse order. So we, we've, we've covered basically um, stepping through all the elements from left to right, but what if you want 19, 18, 16, all the way to 10? Like how do you actually uh, get that? And so it's easy just to do a negative one. And all it says is it's gonna start at you know, the first index, the first position, go all the way to the, to the last position, but it's gonna, gonna step uh, in the from right to left in a negative fashion. So in real reality, it's starting at the last element and going all the way to the first element in your array. And this is very much the same thing, this, this line of code here. So what I'm gonna do is display again. Here's the array. What it's saying is that I'm gonna start at five. So the position five, right? Not the value five. There is no value five here, but the position five is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 15 is where it's going to start. And then it's going to step in reverse. It's going to go from right to left. And it's going to take every other element. So I, I'm expecting a 15, 13, and 11. And let's see what I get. 15, 13, 11. And that's exactly the behavior that I expect. All right, so now let's go to multi-dimensional arrays. This is much harder uh, because you are just dealing with, you know, um, rows and columns rather than just one row. But it's actually just the same concept. So let's look at this two-dimensional array X2. And again, like if, you, if, if you're starting just now, you need to build the arrays that are at the very top. So if you go all the way to the top of the notebook, where is it? Right here, execute this, because this builds X1, it builds X2. So now we are just gonna utilize X2 because it is a multi-dimensional array. I actually have to run it, sorry. All right. Going down, Let's see if it works. Okay, so I just wanna make sure that the numbers are correct here. All right, so if I wanted basically multiple rows, multiple values, if I wanted to take a subarray of this array it's going to be the very same syntax or nomenclature. So this is shorthand. Another way of um, writing this is basically having two uh, colons, right? I need to have two colons. And what I want essentially is the first two rows and the first three columns. So the, the most explicit way of writing this just for your education is to have um, to start at position zero, index zero. Oops. To go to index two, position two. So the first, the first one right here, the first parameter is always the row. The second parameter is always the column. So in terms of rows, it's gonna go from position one, two, and three. Right. So sorry. Uh, position zero, one, and two, sorry. So position zero, one, and two. So I put a two here because I don't actually want this, this uh, row because the two, this last stop parameter is always exclusive, right? So it's gonna actually only display the first two rows. So position zero and position one. And so in order to exclude the last position, I write a two here, right? And then we're gonna step by one. And then same thing for this, we're gonna start at 
position zero, which is right here and step through by one and end at position three. So it's position one, uh, sorry, position zero, one, two, and three. Three is excluded, so we're only gonna get these three columns here, right? And then we're gonna step by one. Let's see what we get. We are getting the first two rows, which is exactly what we want, and then the first three columns, which is exactly what we want. We're getting just this subarray from this bigger array. So the shorthand of that is essentially this right here. It, you know, to, to a beginner, it's a little bit harder and more difficult to just know what you're gonna get from this shorthand. So honestly, I like to write things out more explicitly, especially as I'm learning things. So if you, if you actually execute that, you get the exact same dis, uh, output. So now what we're gonna discuss is just reverse ordering an array. Or no, sorry, I skipped one. Let's see. So what if I want all rows in every other column? So I want basically all of these rows and then every other column. So I want to actually start at uh, this first column and then I want this um, column here that's 287. So I want essentially, if I, if I write this out, zero, and it goes to three, so position zero, one, two, will give me all of the rows if I write a three here. I'm gonna step by one. I'm gonna start at zero again, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, write, I guess it will be five, it would be, or four. It will be zero, one, two, and three, and if I want all of the columns, I'm gonna write a four because it's going to exclude the fourth column that the fourth index, the fourth position that doesn't exist and just give me all the um, columns up to the third position. And that's exactly what I get. Three, seven, one, two, eight, seven. All right. So if I actually use the shorthand that they were using, Was it, maybe it was this? Oops, maybe not, maybe it was just, sorry. I think it was this. I get, I get the exact same, um, exact same output. All right. Uh, this one's just uh, very easy. Just if you wanna reverse all of the values, all of the elements, you can uh, st use your step, uh, you put negative one as your step, and what that does is it will just reverse everything. And so if you look at the original array, three was up here, and now three is actually at, at the bottom right-hand corner. It's not at the top left-hand corner. So that's just something very easy for you to, to play around with. So the last concept we want to cover is accessing a single row or a single column of an array. This is uh, just kind of shorthand nomenclature as well. It's basically saying that uh, we, if we want to access everything, we want to use a colon. So let's just see what this behaves like. So I'm actually going to get rid of this, this print. So if I want the first column in this X2 array, so it's 371, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want in the in the column position I want the first index I want the first position so that's three seven one and you know again like this is rows the first parameter always corresponds to rows the last parameter always responds uh, corresponds to to um, two columns so I'm just going to write this for just to be explicit. It's always like this, right? So zero means the first column. And so this colon here just means everything. And so the row means I want all rows. So basically if I'm asking for the first column and I want all rows in the first column, I should be getting 371. And let's see if, I, if that's what I get. Yeah, I get 371. It's just instead of showing it and displaying it vertically, it's displaying it horizontally. 
Same concept here. I want the first position of the row. I want three, five, two, four, and I want all of the columns. So I will actually want all of those numbers, three, five, two, four. And is that what I get? Three, five, two, four. That's exactly what I think I'm going to get. So that's just an easy way of accessing entire rows, entire columns. Just use the colon uh, syntax. So here, if you want, I'm going to get rid of this. Basically, just the first row and all of the columns, a short shorthand would just be to write zero. Is that what we get? Yep, we get the exact same thing as what we what we did above. So this is the shorthand of the shorthand. All right. So that's it for accessing subarrays within an array or accessing multiple values in an array. Hopefully that's um, hopefully you understand these concepts and can practice it.